Hello everyone welcome my YouTube channel. Breaking News US Russia defense chiefs discuss Ukraine war in rare phone call few details have emerged of Friday's conversation, but both sides confirmed discussing the Ukraine war in the conversation. United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has held a rare telephone call with his Russian counterpart Sergei Shigu, with the Ukraine war featuring in the talks, according to the defense ministry from both countries. The Pentagon on Friday declined to offer specifics beyond saying that Austin, who initiated the conversation, emphasized the need for lines of communication amid the war in Ukraine. Topical issues of international security, including the situation in Ukraine, were discussed, said Russia's defense ministry. Few details emerged of Friday's conversation, only the second call between the ministers since Moscow invaded Ukraine on February 24. Back in May, Austin had urged Moscow to implement an immediate ceasefire. The call comes as pro-Kremlin officials in Ukraine's east said they were turning the country's southern city of Kherson into a fortress as Kyiv's forces advance. Ukraine said on Friday it had retaken a total of 88 towns and villages in the region since launching its offensive to retake Kherson in September. Kyiv's forces in recent weeks, aided by Western weapons, have been advancing along the west bank of the Dnieper River towards the region's main city Kherson. Blinken. Moscow is not interested in stopping aggression against Ukraine's Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the United States sees no evidence that Russia is interested in ending its aggression against Ukraine and that Moscow is instead moving in the opposite direction. Blinken said during a joint press conference with French Foreign Minister Catherine Colonna, The Voice of America reports. When it comes to diplomacy to end the war, it depends entirely on whether Russia gets to a place where it's actually interested in stopping the aggression that it started, and we've seen no evidence of that in this moment, Blinken said. On the contrary, we see Russia doubling and tripling down on its aggression. In the last month, the mobilization of hundreds of thousands of Russians, horrifically, cannon fodder that Putin is trying to throw into the war. According to Blinken, during talks with the French foreign minister, the West's response to Russia's aggressive actions against Ukraine was discussed. In recent days, we've witnessed Moscow's widespread strikes on civilian infrastructure in Ukraine, many carried out using drones supplied by Iran, Blinken said. These strikes have a clear goal, to make the Ukrainian people suffer. And the damage they're inflicting will make it harder for Ukrainians to heat their homes, find safe water to drink, access the electricity that they need to run everything from stores to hospitals to public transportation. The Secretary of State said Vladimir Putin is wrong to believe that these attacks will break the Ukrainians' will to win. Instead, he is only deepening their resolve to defend their country. Moscow can knock out the lights across Ukraine, but it cannot, it will not, extinguish the Ukrainian spirit. President Putin thought he could divide the transatlantic alliance. Instead, he's brought us even closer together. The United States is working closely with France and other European allies to help make the decisive shift away from dependence on Russian energy, Blinken said. The head of the State Department promised that the U.S. would help the allies in the run-up to the coming winter. He told Kelowna he assured the French foreign minister that the United States will not ignore any of our friends. Ukraine's Zelensky, U.S. officials discuss war, security, rebuilding of energy infrastructure Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky held talks on Friday with members of the U.S. House of Representatives, as local authorities issued alerts over potential Russian airstrikes on the capital Kyiv and other regions. I welcome members of the House of Representatives of the U.S. Congress Mike Turner, James Himes and Eric Swalwell in Kyiv. Your visit at this time is a bold step that demonstrates strong bicameral and bipartisan support for Ukraine. It confirms that the United States is our strategic partner, Zelensky said on his Telegram account. The message noted that Zelensky and the U.S. officials discussed the situation on the front line, Ukraine's preparation for the winter months and the need to rebuild the country's energy infrastructure destroyed in Russia's special military operation since February. Zelensky called for the strengthening of sanctions against Russia, and underlined the importance for Ukraine to receive air defense systems in the necessary quantity to create an air shield. We appreciate the support from the U.S. Congress, U.S. President Joe Biden and his administration, and the entire American people, he added. According to a separate statement by the Ukrainian presidency, the issues of Euro-Atlantic integration and security guarantees for Ukraine were discussed in the meeting. We must keep them in the fight.
The Ukraine's fight for freedom is every democracy's fight. If they fall any of us could be next. If they succeed we all renew the promise of democracy, Congressman Swalwell said on Twitter following the meeting. The U.S. recently made new pledges of $12 billion, bringing the total to over $50 billion in military, financial and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. In recent weeks, Ukrainian forces have made advances, while Moscow called up more reservists and launched new attacks in Ukraine, including the capital Kyiv, following an explosion on a strategic bridge linking Russia to Crimea, which it illegally annexed in 2014. Martial law has also been declared in the Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk, and Zaporizhia regions, which were recently annexed from Ukraine following sham referendums. Ukraine's push in the south comes after a sweeping counteroffensive in the northeast Kharkiv region that has badly impaired Russia's supply routes and logistics corridors in the eastern Donbass region. Russia doubling down on its aggression. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington had seen no evidence that Russia is interested in ending its aggression towards Ukraine, and instead was doubling and tripling down. However, Austin said the U.S. would stay in contact with Russia. We have seen no evidence of that at this moment. On the contrary, we see Russia doubling and tripling down on its aggression, Blinken told a joint news conference with French Foreign Minister Catherine Colonna. Russia attacks, horrific, Blinken pointed to Russia's recent attacks on power stations and other civilian infrastructure in Ukraine and the mobilization of troops who Blinken called, horrifically, cannon fodder that Putin is trying to throw into the war. The fundamental difference is that Ukrainians are fighting for their country, their land, their future. Russia is not and the sooner President Putin understands that and comes to that conclusion, the sooner we will be able to end this war, Blinken said. Meanwhile, Ukraine's energy minister said that Russian air attacks have hit at least half of Ukraine's thermal generation capacity, causing billions of dollars of damage since October 10, though not all those power units have stopped working completely. German Galashenko told the Reuters news agency that Ukraine may need electricity imports to get through the winter after attacks that had struck 30 to 40 percent of power infrastructure and traders were already holding negotiations with suppliers. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Friday urged the West to warn Russia not to blow up a dam in southern Ukraine that would cause severe flooding. Russia has accused Ukraine of rocketing the dam and planning to destroy it in what Kyiv officials called a sign Russia might blow it up and blame Ukraine. Neither side produced evidence to back up their allegations. West, Russia clash at UN over Iranian drone use in Ukraine Tehran accused of violating Security Council resolution anchoring 2015 nuclear deal by supplying Moscow with UAVs that have allegedly been used to attack civilians, power plants United Nations, AP, the United States and key Western allies accused Russia on Friday of using Iranian drones to attack civilians and power plants in Ukraine in violation of a 2015 UN Security Council resolution and international humanitarian law. Russia countered by accusing Ukraine of attacking infrastructure and civilians for eight years in the eastern separatist regions of Donetsk and Luhansk, which Russian President Vladimir Putin illegally annexed earlier this year. The US, France, Germany and Britain supported Ukraine's call for UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to send a team to investigate the origin of the drones. Russian Ambassador Vasily Nebenzia said the drones are Russian and warned that an investigation would violate the UN Charter and seriously affect relations between Russia and the United Nations. US Deputy Ambassador Jeffrey De Laurentiis said that the UN must investigate any violations of UN Security Council resolutions and we must not allow Russia or others to impede or threaten the UN from carrying out its mandated responsibilities. The Western clash with Russia over attacks on civilians and infrastructure and the use of Iranian drones came at an open council meeting that also focused on the dire humanitarian situation in Ukraine as winter approaches. Almost 18 million people, more than 40 percent of Ukraine's population, need humanitarian assistance, UN humanitarian coordinator Denise Brown says. UN political chief Rosemary DiCarlo expressed grave concern to the council that Russian missile and drone attacks between October 10 and October 18 in cities and towns across Ukraine killed at least 38 Ukrainian civilians, injured at least 117 and destroyed critical energy infrastructure, including power plants. She cited the Ukrainian government's announcement that 30 percent of the country's energy facilities have been hit, most notably in the capital Kyiv and in the Dnepropetrovsk, Lviv, Kharkiv and Sumy regions. 
Good day to everyone.